it's my first video of 2020 obviously I posted before in 2020 but this is the first video I'm sitting down to actually record in 2020 feeling the new year energy and uh, I got a haircut my bangs usually look better than this but I just woke up I'm embracing the grays this year I'm dealing with some New Year's Eve acne and every year I seem to do this like year-end retrospective where I kind of take a look at my channel's performance over the last year. Not even really the performance, but like the demographics and uh, just kind of celebrating what I did last year because to be honest, I'm a very small YouTuber, but this year 2020 is going to be an amazing year because I'm going to hit 10,000 subscribers. Wow. Which took me years to get to. So cheers to me. Cheers to you. I'm just gonna do like a whole year retrospective and kind of get ready for the day. And to start this little get ready, I'm gonna use this Dr. Dennis Gross Clinical Grade Resurfacing Liquid Peel, which I've done a whole video on. Dr. Dennis Gross actually sent this to me, not for any compensation or anything, but they sent it to me, which is another exciting thing that happened in 2019. I got a maybe two or three companies sending me stuff, and I mean like legit companies. Um, Kiss Lashes also ended up sending me some lashes in a little PR package. That was exciting because it was like their magnetic lashes which they just launched. And then I proceeded to pretty much roast how shitty those magnetic lashes were. So we'll see if I ever get more Kiss Lashes in the future, but why not just shoot yourself in the foot for the sake of honesty and integrity and feeling proud of your YouTube channel? So we're gonna like peel my skin here. So starting with step one of this two-step process. And let's take a look back at the very start of the year. At the beginning of 2019, I had 6,400 subscribers, uh, just over 3 million views, and uh, 606 uploads. And it was either the later part of 2018 or the sometime in 2019 that I decided to kind of slow down and go from three videos a week to just two videos a week. So I actually output a lot less this year. And I think it is reflected in my stats because I grew a little slower this year. So in 2019, I got 1.5 million views and that's over... 48,000 hours of watch time, and that translated to 2.6 thousand more subs. So, I just hit 9,000 subs at, like, literally, like, New Year's Eve, maybe the day before. So that was incredibly exciting. I'm really glad I got to hit that milestone. 8,000 feels really far from 10,000. And now 10,000 just feels like so inevitable and so close. So, very exciting. I'm kind of honestly relishing being so small that like I'm not overly criticized or I don't know if I'm taken incredibly seriously because, well, look at me. And because of my like small size, which I think is a really nice feeling as well. I'm kind of relishing it. When my inevitable virility hits off and... Um, the whole world knows me. I'm sure it'll be a little bit tougher to navigate and I'll make a lot more mistakes or at least be called out for things that y'all aren't calling me out for now. But for now, I can just kind of like be myself, be human. I forgot I had to let step one rest on my skin for two minutes before we move on to step two. So let me finish, finish polishing up my face here and then we can uh, chat more. Okay, let's moisturize. So I'm going to be using this Dr. Jart Sikapair, Sikapair, Sikapair Tiger Grass Cream all over my face and putting some Lana Lips 101 ointment on my lips. And let's take a second to check out my top three uploads from 2019. So my third most successful upload in 2019, if we're going off of views, is the Schwarzkopf Hair Mascara Demo and Review, where I test out covering up your gray hair with uh, this like mascara pen. I actually have it right here. And I will say a lot of my gray hair covering videos have done really well, 
which is then I guess is kind of cool because I do plan on like growing out my gray hair this year so like testing out these temporary hair solutions will not of course be a problem not that it was ever a problem but um, I'm still gonna like test out gray covering tools even though I feel like I'm finally at a stop in my life where like I'm okay showing my gray hair, I kind of chatted with a subscriber last year about like if we were ready to like stop covering up our gray hair or not, like as women, like professional working women. And like last year I was not ready. But I think this year I got a new hairstylist. Uh, I think I'm ready to like kind of embrace it and show it off and show that just because you have gray hair doesn't mean you're like super old you could just be like young or middle young and still have gray hair and that's totally cool and normal and there may come a day where i'm like you know what i want to cover up my gray hair again and i'm gonna be cool with that too i'm just kind of relaxing and being more willing and open to experiment with what i look like in non-traditionally beautiful ways then I'm going to have some fun and try out this Tatcha Silk Canvas Filter Finish Protective Primer. And then we can talk about my second most viewed upload from 2019. And that would be the Crest 3D White, White Strips Classic Vivid Teeth Whitening Kit Demo and Review. And I don't think it's any surprise that this video does really well. These products are easy to get at the, like, just drugstore. And... They're expensive, so people want like reviews before they test them out. And personally, I really like those. So if you're interested, go check out that video. But yeah, no real surprise that the White Strips video did well. And my most successful upload from 2019 was my MAC Studio Fix Powder Plus Foundation 12 Hour Wear Test and Review. Again, I don't think I'm super surprised that it did super well because it's a MAC product and, you know, it's widely used. Again, it's pretty expensive, so people want a good review before they test it out, before they invest. And, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of ambivalent about the product, honestly. But if you want my full review, you can check it out up here. Now I'm going to take my Elizabeth Arden Flawless Finish Perfectly Satin 24 hour foundation and I'm just gonna squirt a tiny bit of my Josie Moran Argan Matchmaker Serum Foundation into there and I'm gonna cover up my face. Continuing on with my base, I'm going to use my Fenty Beauty Matchsticks in Amber and my Sephora Blush to Go in Miss Spicy. Um, and we can reflect over my overall top performing videos of all time up to this point and my number three most viewed video of all time which I guess I do agree with uh, makes it one of the most successful videos on my channel because I like getting views is my Batiste dry shampoo review and demo where I test out some dry shampoo the really content lots of people comment on it and give, give their opinions of dry shampoos or, I don't know. I feel like a lot of people have a lot to say about dry shampoo. If they feel it's gross, if they just hate dry shampoo, it's a good time. So I would recommend you go check it out and leave your own comment on the ongoing drama that is dry shampoo. Second, uh, kind of surprising, my Braun Face Facial Epilator Cleansing Brush Review and Demo, where I test out my facial epilator. And I don't know, I guess it's not that surprising either that it's a, such a successful video. Uh, hair removal is like a huge topic. And facial hair on women is like this ongoing battle that you have to just dis discreetly and effectively deal with on a regular basis. And honestly, I really do recommend that face epilator. And my number one video is my root cover up in dark brown. Temporary Gray Concealer Spray from L'Oreal. Review and demo of that. And what can I say? My gray hair 
really paying off for me. Again, it's another really controversial one, kind of like the dry shampoo because like the product never fully dries, it always transfers. So some people really love it and some people really hate it, but I get like multiple comments on a day on it. Um, it hasn't reached a million views yet, I don't think, but it's like creeping up there. So I can pretty much guarantee it's gonna be my first video like standalone video that reaches a million views which is gonna be a bit of a like milestone for me and I also refuse to look at these statistics and think I should just move completely into like hair even though like hair seems to be my most successful videos because like I like hair and I like doing hair kind of but I'm not like passionate about it like I am makeup I do think that it is pretty telling that a lot of my success of my uh, videos has come from like one of my greatest defects which is having like gray hair at a pretty young age. So I think that's another part of the reason why I'm like so gung ho about embracing it this year. I'm just going to go everything with my Max Studio Plus because I was thinking about this with like Nima Tang. And just like how she's really like been so successful and you do have to wonder like would she be so successful if like so much awokeness hadn't been like happening with the Tarte foundations and just like foundations in general and beauty representation she just happened to be the right place at the right time with the right flaw which would be having like incredibly dark skin and I personally don't think that's a flaw but I think when you look at like successful beauty gurus, like mainstream wise, there aren't a ton of like really dark skinned beauty gurus out there. So I think it's just amazing. And just having the coverage to like stand up and say, look, I am I have this as a part of me. It's like my identity and we're just gonna like go full at it and I'm gonna do a series addressing it like head on. So I don't know. I was just thinking about that. Props to Nima Tang. And it always like, makes me think about it when I do my own reviews about like foundations and like the best I can give to people is well this foundation doesn't come in a lot of shades I think the brand could do better or something that's literally like all I can contribute but overall I feel like what I can give back is uh is pretty insignificant and almost like trivial and so I was thinking, like, what is the solution for that? And I think the real solution would be for me to just encourage other creators watching that, like, you don't, you can have a fulfilling and, like, great YouTube career, hobby, uh, just by, like, being yourself and not being the best and kind of embracing whatever you're working with. Um, there's no, like, beauty standard that you need to achieve. You can play with con conventional beauty, you can play with unconventional beauty. Like just putting yourself out there and having a voice, I think it makes you a brave person and I think it also makes you a more compassionate viewer of other people's videos where when you're watching other people's videos and other people are making mistakes, you can be a little bit more understanding about the level of criticism that they are subjected to. <laughs> I think a lot of criticism of my video, which I like actively go around and erase because I just don't like looking at it, is telling me like how uneducated I am about makeup or like how my techniques suck. And okay, obviously I'm putting myself out there to receive these types of criticisms because I put these videos out in public and I leave my comments on like, I'm asking for a dialogue to happen. People that probably get the most criticism for the way they do their makeup is just like everyday normal women who put makeup on every single day. And obviously not every woman who puts on makeup is like a flippin' makeup artist. And I'm sure not a lot of women like care to be makeup artists or don't just find like a little routine that works for them and makes them feel better about addressing some of their insecurities and that's like good enough for them but nope on the internet even like other people who watch my videos will be like uh my girlfriend applies this differently so I'm I feel like I'm entitled to criticize how you apply your makeup because of the way that my girlfriend like applies her makeup which is like utter bullshit 
unless you have like a very valid criticism for the way that I put on my makeup which like only I can really determine what that valid criticism would be like yeah I'm gonna delete it <laughs> like yeah I'm not gonna let you say that to me to my face because even if I'm not a makeup artist and I could grow and do better which like even makeup artists can grow and do better this is just like me sharing what I do with you it's not necessarily me asking how to use a product or how to get better using a product from you like I could figure that out on my own but I'm thinking especially of like my Natasha Denona palette review which might have even been from like two years ago but I get comments on that video all the time about how I just like suck at putting on eyeshadow and that I shouldn't blame the palette for being shitty if I'm shitty which like fair enough like you can think that and you can talk about that with other people but like don't comment that on my video think I won't see that and like feel something about it like of course I'm gonna be super defensive about it and be like you know what if this makeup product doesn't work for me it's because it doesn't work for me and here's the reasons why I don't think it works for me even if part of that includes the fact that it's not compatible with a technique that I use to put on my makeup yeah like you're dwelling on your criticism yeah it's okay right? <laughs> I know it's okay so don't need to uh, <laughs> I feel like you I was listening to you feel like you were like just circling around the same topic but sometimes you sound genuinely upset we're recording all of this so. <laughs> anyway, I'm allowed to be upset because sometimes making YouTube videos is upsetting. Which, like, if you were wanting to make a YouTube video, you'd have to be prepared for. That's true. I was getting to a point. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think this eyeliner pen is getting dry. Anyway, I guess my point is that those types of critiques are just another way of like trying to silence you as if like when you turn the camera off you don't just go about your life putting on your makeup the exact same way that you do in your videos trying out products that may or may not work for you in the exact same way with the exact same thought process sure you can bother to criticize someone for like being shitty at makeup or being ugly but like that doesn't actually stop them from like living life and experimenting with makeup in their free time like I think about this a lot and I I really want to encourage you to be kinder like I don't think my subscribers need to hear this I feel like this is just me venting to my subscribers if you ask me what message I would want to send to like the entire internet it will literally just be be kinder when you comment like, people aren't just always putting on a show for the camera. It's not necessarily all fake. Although, I'm not saying it's all real either. It, in fact, might be this, like, weird in-between world of, like, half reality, like, half fantasy. But the point is, there's a real person on the other end of it. Like, we are not actors. I've, I love how a lot of people think when you write a comment, they, they treat it like whoever made the video might not actually, like, watch or read the comments. But I feel like when you comment on a YouTube video, you should just assume that the creator will be looking at it. And they'll probably be interested, like really genuinely interested to hear what you have to say. Don't stop and be a dick. That is not what we need in 2020. In 2020, my goal is to be more compassionate, more empathetic. I guess I want to be less bitter and less like hurt. Which I think will also be kind of challenging in 2020. Yikes. So I know what you're thinking now. You're thinking, how do people find you on YouTube? Most people, woo, most people find my videos through YouTube search. And because I review a lot of products, I'm very cognizant of this fact. So I do like kind of set up my channel to be optimized for YouTube search. So that means when I upload a video, I do spend a lot of time thinking of keywords that people might find. Obviously, I'm not successful a lot of the time because, well, at first, people just aren't searching for the products that I'm interested because not all of my videos are, like, super successful. Second of all, they find me using external 
like other websites not through YouTube. Most of those views are from Google search, so thanks Google, I guess. And last of all, people will find me on the browse or suggested tabs on YouTube. So really, I am just mercilessly at the whim of Google for views. Thank you, Google. Oh, yeah, and I did my eye makeup with the Neutral Mattes Viseart Palette. My, I attempted to use my Kat Von D tattoo liner. Kat Von D is still canceled, but I got a free sample. So I thought I would use it up, but that's pretty much empty. My L'Oreal Lunar Intense favorite black eyeliner and my Clarins 4-in-1 Stilo. And I'm going to go in with some red lipstick from a Canadian brand, Tone Cosmetics. I should see if they have any like new products. Mmm, it feels so silky and like moisturizing. I really kind of have been neglecting this lipstick. Remember that time I got a BoxyCharm and there was a mini straight iron in it, but I'm in the depths of my curly girl thing, so I refused to straighten my hair? Well, now I have bangs. For a while there, I was trying to like rehome this little guy to find someone who would actually use him. But now I'm really thankful that I hold it, held on to him because things. So now I bet you're wondering, what were my most popular playlists? In 2019, because yes, I do try to <clears throat> make playlists, <clears throat> and I very half-heartedly try to keep them updated, but sometimes I slack off and don't keep them fully up to date, so I went through the other day and tried to get them a little bit more up to date. So my top three playlists that I try to get people stuck in and watching my channel are mascara and lashes, and I'm pretty sure it's the lashes that really drive this, um... Playlist, so I'm gonna try to do more lashes this year um, just my general uploads which is really great and it feels nice to see that people are just watching my uploads in the order that I upload them in <clears throat> and then finally foundations and primers which foundation is one of those products that just always like skip that always gets me excited to like try out and I feel like everybody's skin is so different that there could be like 18 billion foundation videos on the internet, but that shit never gets old. Now let's talk about you now that I'm all made up. I should just powder here. Um, what do you look like, my dear audience? Let me paint you a picture. So this will come as no surprise to people who have watched my previous yearly recap videos, but 99% of the people, statistically, 99% of all viewers who watch my videos are not subscribed to my channel. Like, I'm a review channel. I don't really have an ongoing story or anything. Which makes me really appreciate the 1% of you that are subscribers even, even more. Like, thank you guys. 86% of you are female, 14% of you are male, whatever that means. 70% of my viewers are between the age of 18 and 34, and then 25% of you are between 35 and 54, which is a little bit worrying to me because I actually turned 35 this year. I'm stepping outside, I'm aging up into the next bracket. And then 3% of my viewers are over 55, and 4% of my viewers are under 17. 30% of you guys live in the USA, 8% of you live in India, 6% of you, you live in the UK, 6% of you live here with me in Canada, and then 4% of you are from Germany, and then every other country on this planet is beneath that 4% from Germany. I'd love to know where you are if you just want to leave a comment down below. Again, that's overall viewers and not subscribers, so I bet my subscriber count paints a very different picture than my overall viewership. And of course you guys know YouTube has that little bell which you're supposed to ring for notifications. And actually 1,000 of my 9,000 subscribers do have this notification on, which again is pretty amazing. I feel like that is another sign of like being a true, true, true fan. It seems low to have 9,000 subscribers and only 1k with the notification on, but that does fall within YouTube's like recommended normal levels of about 10%. So... 
I'm normal. And again, I like to think that I don't need to tell people to turn on the bell because A, I don't turn on the bell for like anybody and B, I have a like upload schedule. So like you don't need the bell because I upload Tuesdays and Thursdays on regular times. But again, if you are one of those people and chances are you are one of these people if you're watching this video that's not like a review, it's nothing super exciting. Thank you guys for going the extra mile and supporting me. Very appreciated. Now to wrap up this whole video, now that I'm beautified, I guess I'll do one final step and set my face with the Urban Decay setting spray. Most of my face where my bangs aren't touching anyway. Now I bet you're asking yourself, Corey, what are your New Year's resolutions for this year? Well, let me tell you. Number one. I, my goal, and this is so ambitious, I do not know if I have the faith, faith in myself to actually see this one through, but this is the year where I don't want to shop at Sephora. I'm going to try to do a lot more shopping at Shoppers Drug Mart online, which would like be the Canadian equivalent of Sephora. Like I do have a really nice Shoppers Drug Mart just by my house, but I hate going in to purchase things in real life because I just don't want that human interaction. I don't want to explain why I care about certain products. I just want to experiment and try products that I want to try. This year I'm going to really try not to shop at Sephora, not to hit Rouge status again, which I've hit for the last couple of years that I've been YouTubing, but uh, this year that's going to change. Do you think I can do it? Yes or no? Leave a comment down below. I feel like if Shoppers Drug Mart had a shopping, like a beauty store app, that would be like the thing that makes it the most easiest to fulfill. Because I do spend a lot of time on Sephora's app just browsing, looking at what's new, adding things to my cart, taking things out of my cart. I don't know, I just enjoy the Sephora app. And I wish Shoppers Drug Mart had a better system for that. Number two, I need to find a new beauty box because I think in April it'll be my last frock box for my year of frock box. And it's a little sad because frock box is so local. If you haven't watched any of my frock box videos, you can find the playlist up here where I get clothes sent to me from another Canadian company. It's actually the same province that I am in, Alberta very near the city that I live in because they are based out of St. Albert and I am based out of Edmonton. If you have any recommendations for me, let me know. Could be beauty, could be fashion, something interesting like that. Definitely let me know. And finally, my last goal, my last New Year's resolution since 10k is pretty much in the bag, my goal is to get to 15,000 subs by the end of the year, which sounds damn well impossible. Uh, maybe we can pull out 14, but damn it, I wrote down 15. We're gonna hit 15k subscribers. There you go. And I guess that sums up pretty well my year-end retrospective, my state of the channel address, if you will. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I think I'm just about ready to start my day here. And another heartfelt thank you from me for you guys who watched my videos, even these boring ones where I'm not actually reviewing products. Just like last year, I am very willing to embrace the fact that I have boring, regular content. And I think that consistency and boringness definitely gives me strength and keeps me grounded. And I hope you feel something about my videos. If you do, leave a comment down below again. I'm desperate. Huge shout out to my patrons as always for watching and supporting me make these videos. All the Patreon money I get and all my AdSense money, to be honest, goes back into production and buying makeup products to test out. And thank you guys. Uh, thank you, of course, for watching. I'm going to really try hard this year to be more active on Instagram and Twitter. So if you want to follow me over there, I'm at CoreySide on both of those platforms. And aside from that, you guys, I hope you guys have a beautiful and lovely 2020, whatever that means to you. Thanks for spending this next upcoming year with me. We'll see you in my next beauty video. Bye.